Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Diane and Phyllis go to war, Summer goes to Victor for support. A deliver man leaves a note for Abby at society. She reads the note inside the envelope, smiles, and opens it. Harrison tells Kyle and Claire at the Abbott Mansion that he got sick from shrimp. He consumed a lot. Kyle jokes that his mother never told him to slow down and expresses his gratitude for his improved health. Harrison says he called off his vacation. Kyle assures the child that he is his top priority. Now that he is feeling better, Harrison considers taking the group to Paris. Yes, Claire? They'll go someday, but not just now, Kyle assures him. Harrison claims that his mother informed him that it was fortunate that he did not travel to Paris because she would not have been able to care for him if he had become ill there. He tells how Summer assisted him by giving him crackers and ginger ale. Perhaps she's right, perhaps it was a good idea for me to stay here so she could comfort me. He says they are now a family. Claire extends her hand for an embrace. Harrison begs for ice cream and has an empty stomach. Summer pays Victor a visit at Newman, where they talk about her Marchetti triumph. He loves to see her and is overjoyed that she stopped by. His legend status is hinted to by Summer. He queries the purpose of the flattery. Summer acknowledges she came to seek his assistance. She is certain that he is aware of the conflict between her and Kyle. Victor always assumed their relationship was friendly. That was prior to Kyle betraying his family and being sacked from Jabot, according to Summer. After that, he co-owned Glissade with Audra Charles. She is evidence that Kyle is self-centered. She didn't agree to split custody with this man. The news that Victor is evicting Harrison from the only Genoa city house he has ever known pains him. Summer gripes that he intends to defeat Jabot using Glissade. Audra is a serpent. She should not be anywhere close to my son. She has no choice but to file a lawsuit to get full custody of her son because Kyle won't listen to her. The boy can only be shielded from Kyle's toxicity in this way. She bemoans the fact that Audra and Kyle were planning to take Harrison to Paris. Then her attorney intervened, saying that he might have remained there indefinitely. Victor understands her perspective, but he also observes a guy attempting to escape his father's control. Summer is aware of his dislike for Jack, but he is unable to support Kyle's relationship with Audra Charles. Victor is unsure of precisely what she wants from him. Diane thanks Jack at the club for the celebration last night. When the conversation shifts to Harrison, Diane promises to text Kyle to check on the boy. He thanking her for phoning him will be seen as a victory by her. Her eyes dart to Phyllis, and she tells Jack to brace himself. Arriving, Phyllis walks up and greets me with a good morning. Diane affirms, that was. She tells Phyllis all about her wonderful anniversary dinner with Jack. Phyllis is very pleased for both of them. She is accused by Diane of expecting something from them. Phyllis claims she arrives peacefully. We are currently facing a problem. Kyle and Summer. She believes their wisdom would be useful. Wisdom? scoffs Diane. From you? Phyllis claims that since they have already experienced custody disputes, they don't want their kids to experience them. Diane scoffs, saying, you can't be suggesting that the three of us get together and collaborate. Phyllis believes that everyone wants Harrison to lead a happy, well-adjusted life, and that is what they all want for him. Diane claims Kyle is attempting to provide him with that. Phyllis contends that he is currently acting irrationally. He's treating Summer horribly and making poor choices for Harrison. Kyle is making it difficult for her to be the kind of mother she wants to be to her baby. You need to realize that he is insane. When Diane starts to lose it, Jack tells Phyllis, that's enough. Summer is not in danger from Kyle. When Abby gets to Chancellor Park, a romantic picnic is waiting for her. Hello. Pretty lady, says Devin as he appears. Giving her a pink rose, he remarks that he felt she deserved a little pampering. She is concerned that he might miss work. He claims that she is the only thing that matters at this moment. 
Devin tells her he had to make up for accidentally revealing his proposal during a chance conversation as they sit on the picnic blanket. He is reassured by Abby. When it happened, they were gushing over one another's affection. They concur they don't regret anything. Devin, nevertheless, asserts that the proposal must treat her and their relationship fairly if they are to live out the rest of their days together. He makes fun of the fact that Dom gave him some really good recipe suggestions. He presents cheese and PB&J sandwiches. Dessert, Abby surmises, is sugar cookies. As Devin opens the lid, the words, will you marry me, are written in the cookies. Devin approaches the cookie tray, selects a ring, and kneels down. His best buddy is someone he wants to be with for the rest of his life. She always pushes him to grow as a man and demonstrates to him what true acceptance and trust feel like. Abby, you amaze me so much. His desire was to assist her in realizing her dream of having a child. There isn't a better mother than Dom, you're flawless. Regarding the course of events, he has no regrets. It was destined to happen. He is incredibly devoted to her. Will you marry me and make me the luckiest and happiest man on earth, Abby Newman? Yes, replies Abby, and she will continue to say yes for the rest of their lives. They share a kiss as Devon places the gem on her finger. Summer tells her grandfather at Victor's office that she wants her son to grow up with her and that she needs his guidance on how to successfully defend him. Is that how far it's gone? asks Victor. Is there no way to come to an agreement? Summer answers with zero. She's being pursued by Kyle. She is concerned that she is not Harrison's biological mother. Harrison may be fully taken from her by Kyle. Although she adopted the boy, she worries that it is insufficient. How do I engage in this? Victor hopes to keep things peaceful between them and will speak with Kyle. Harrison is not benefiting from it, and neither is anyone else. Let's do this, Kyle says to Harrison at the Abbott residence. Victor texts him right immediately, asking him to come to the athletic club lounge right away. Change of plans, he says. Claire is going to treat him some ice cream. Claire observes that Kyle appears agitated when Harrison is sent to the kitchen. He urges her to maintain his son's smile, explaining that it's a work-related issue. Diane and Jack are seated at Phyllis's table in the club dining room. Up until recently, she claims, Kyle and Summer were co-parenting rather successfully. All of a sudden, Kyle began acting badly and was angry with her daughter. That's not true, counters Diane. Phyllis confirms that this is entirely accurate. Diane, your son is heading down a dark path. She claims that by terminating him, she forced him to go there. A parent firing their own son? That's a personal family matter, according to Jack. As Kyle has chosen to take the boy from the only house he has known and seek sole custody, Phyllis is upset about how the private family issue is impacting Harrison and her daughter. Diane charges Phyllis with falsifying the information. Everything was good up until Summer hired an attorney and filed a lawsuit. Jack concurs that Summer initiated contact.